let's talk about how we can easily go from around 40 FPS to well over 500, close to 600, using the multi-mesh node. All right, so if we're looking at an empty project here, we have nothing in the scene. We do have a multi-mesh node, but it's not doing anything. And we have just our main node. And if we were to run this, with just an empty, empty project here, go ahead and take a look at debugger, monitors, and we can look at the FPS. Uh, I'm getting around 3,100, 3,200 range uh, at the moment, which is great, but Something that you need to know is that every node that gets added into your tree is going to take up some overhead. And what that means is every time you add a node to your tree, that node is going to subtract from performance at the end of the day. And we could take a look at that by, if I just use this, if I just use this, uh, my main script here, I'm going to turn on my spawn sprites. So I'm going to create 9,000, or sorry, 97,969, just empty node 2ds they don't do anything it's just a node 2d being added into into the uh, scene tree and we saw before my frames were sitting around 3200 and if i just do this just adding all these empty nodes in right so if i go ahead and select the remote tab we should hopefully see that there they go <laughs> they've all been spawned in and if i take a look at the debugger you see the whole editor here is kind of slowing down just give it a moment click on that debugger come on you can do it editor uh, you can see we're down to a um, hundred and you see we've had dips well below that uh, while we're at it so even just going down from 3000 to the 100 and I have a feeling that uh, OBS is playing a small part in this because um, that is not that was not uh, laggy like that earlier um but you can see that even just going down to 100 we've lost massive performance just with empty 2d nodes that do nothing All right so even with that we can see what that performance loss is like even if we're not adding any actual objects into our scene for our multi-mesh i think i'm just going to go ahead and delete that for now so we can just add a new one later uh, but with this we can see we already dropped down to 100. now what i'm going to do here is now I'm, the way i've been doing it is i just have an export for spawns price so i can just take that on and off so i can determine whether or not to actually do my spawns and i have another option here which is an export range which is just allowing to, me to set this number between one and a million and steps of one and I have my default set to 97,969. And if this Boolean called Spawn Sprites is ticked off, then I'm basically going to use whatever number I put in there for the instance count. And I'm going to spawn that many objects. All right, so we just did that with the, with the this empty node 2D. And we saw the kind of performance impact. Now, let's say we have a bunch of grass in our level, right? This could be 2D, it could be 3D, it doesn't really matter. But let's say we have a bunch of grass or uh, maybe another one we have a bunch of trees because maybe it's a forested area All right whatever it is uh, whatever we're putting in there a mesh instance is going to support this but let's go ahead and take a look if we were to change this to if we were to use a scene All right because you come in you create a uh maybe your grass scene and you move that all around inside of the editor or you create a tree scene and then you can use that tree in different parts of your town right whatever it is one moment there we go so i'm just loading in my pack scene which is going to be a log and then i'm creating an instance of it i'm doing it the instance count so 97,969 times i'm just setting the position to a random spot on the screen and then i'm adding it into our scene all right, and if we were to run that and take a look, we can see going to our debugger, our FPS is, huh, 
it's even worse. So if this was a heavily forested area or a an area with a lot of grass being shown, uh, maybe it's in the background or again, if it's in 3D, maybe it's just attached to your uh, your normal plane, whatever, right? The point is, we can see we've dropped all the way down to 39 FPS, 38, 37, 39, right? So around that 35 to 40 area with with having all this say hypothetical grass um, all over the place that is massive when you consider that we started at 3200 fps it's absolutely crazy and this is where the multi mesh actually comes in and the reason why we're going to get this performance boost that you're going to see is because when they're all separate like this, we're getting all of these different, each of these sprites are getting a different a draw call. So for each of these logs in my case, the CPU is telling the GPU, hey, draw this log, 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 hey, draw this log. And that's going all over for the 97,969 that are here. But if we, when we use a mesh instance, all of that, it will be basically compressed down into one call and the CPU is just going to make the one call. It's just going to say, hey, draw these logs. Cool. Right. And that's it. And because of that, we're going to get, even though it's going to draw a lot of these logs, which is still going to give us a performance hit from the 3200. We are still going to have massive performance gains in comparison. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this. You can see we're sitting there at around 40 FPS this entire time. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn it, untick this, all right? That way we're not spawning anything and I can go ahead and I can, I can run it. I can show you, right? Go ahead. We don't run it. I'm running at uh 3,300, 3,600 FPS, right? When we have this empty 34, 35, right? 20. Now when we do a multi mesh, right? And the 3d works just like the 2d. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in. Now the texture uh, is what we're going to put in. So in my case, it's going to be my log, right? Then I put in my multi mesh. I'm going to do a new multi mesh transform. This is going to uh, determine whether or not you're working with 2D or 3D uh, values here, right? So 2D transforms and 3D transforms. Obviously, we're working with 2D, so we're going to use 2D transforms. Um, use colors, I'm not going to, but if you want to use the colors uh, property on each instance, which of course is just a vector three at the end of the day. So you could you you don't have to use it for color. You can use it for whatever you want. And same with custom data. That is also a vector three that you could use for whatever you want. Um, but we have our multi mesh here. We have a log texture, but we can't see anything. And we can't see anything because we need a mesh to put this on. So if I come into my mesh here and since this is 2D, we can just use a quad mesh and that is basically just a square that we can apply our texture to. So I do a quad mesh and we can't see anything here. And if I go ahead and increase this say to 10 and for the visible instance, we can leave it there. Um, actually this is the instance count. So this will be our 97,000, but for now I'll put that at a hundred. Um, the property I was looking at is inside of the mesh here at size. So let's say we go to 10 and you see the Y here is positive. So you might want to go 10 that were kind of worked, but we see, we can take a look. Um, the issue that we're going to have here is this is actually going to be put upside down and I don't know if it'll show it here. Uh, no, it's a little too big. We can't see that. Um, but that's actually going to show it upside down. So what we actually have to do is change the Y to negative 10 because remember, Positive Y is actually going up and negative are actually coming down. Okay, so we have that. And of course you can come in and you can do a material. And this is where the, uh, I guess you can say limitation comes in because a multi mesh is going to be best for static objects. Again, like trees, grass and that, but you might notice that in games we do have trees that sway. You have grass that kind of bend as the character walks through it. All these things are kind of like animations. But in order to handle these, you would work with a shader. Now, this, of course, is a completely separate topic, but 
that's where you would handle those kind of animations and effects is inside of the material and creating yourself a shader. Mm -hmm. uh, but with this, I have my size set at 10 and negative 10. Instance count, we have 100. We have a texture set and our mesh is set to just being a quad. And that's great. We just now have to actually place these objects somewhere. So I'm going to go ahead and this is where we put a script on it. Comes into play. So I'm just going to drag my script. Of course, you can go ahead and add a new one. All right. So I'll be starting out with a, a variable for my ID because each of these um, instances on our multi mesh, each one is going to have their own ID assigned to them. And spawn multi mesh is going to be working just like my other uh, export on the main. So when I take that to true, that's when we're going to do the spawning. All right, so I can come in and we can say bunk. We can go into our ready and we can say if spawn multi mesh, right? So if this is enabled, then we can actually start spawning. And just like before, we're going to do this with our we're going to use our instance count. Now we don't have this variable. This actually already exists. Remember, it's right here inside of the multi mesh property itself. So we're going to say for X in multi mesh dot instance count. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the transform 2D. So this is going to be, um, I would say position, but this is more than the position because this also takes into considering like the basis, right? And so we've got uh, like rotation and scale and that that we can uh, fully modify in here as well. Of course, we're not going to do that this time, but we're just going to set the transform. So we're going to do multi mesh dot set instance transform 2d and it's going to take an instance which is going to be our id comma and the second argument is going to be a transform 2d and there are multiple different arguments that you could put in here but when we're putting in two arguments um i'm sorry just the uh yeah two arguments we're going to put in a zero uh, for our rotation and then we're actually going to put in a position and the position i'm going to put in here is going to be just like before it's going to be a vector 2 with our random range it looks like i'm missing a four of these there we go now that's a lot so i'm going to go ahead and break that down into uh, a few lines here. Just to make that a little easier uh, to see. There we go. All right. So we're setting the instance transform 2D to a transform 2D and zero on the rotation. And the vector two for the position is going to be random position on my screen. And in order to ensure that we're actually making some progress here, we're changing the position of all of them. We're going to do ID plus equals one. So we can move to the next ID, AKA our next object. And really that's all we need to do. So we go ahead and turn that on. And we have just a hundred set up. We can run it. And we should see a hundred of these things all spawned all over the screen. Now these are tiny. Of course, depending on your game, your progress, these, the size that you want to use is going to be different for everyone. Uh, for example, we go 20 and negative 20 or 32 and negative 32, right? So we can see all these logs. And if we were to look at the debugger with 100 of them spawned in, we're still at over 3,000. We're even peaking on 3,500. So let's see what happens if we go for the full, uh, if I can find it here, right here, 97,969, just like we did with the sprites, where we had went down to 35 to 40 FPS. And on here, 
I don't think that's set in. Just hit the enter key there again. Give that a try. There we go. So now we spawned all those in. Same amount as we did with the sprites. Only now, if we look at the FPS, we're sitting at 590, 587, 583, 585, 580. Right? So we're sitting up there at that high 500s. And at times we will, well, I will hit peaks of 600 with 97,969 objects spawned in here on the screen. And you see that is a massive improvement from what, 34 FPS, 40 FPS, huge improvement by using this multi-mesh. Now, again, your limitations, you can't really do things like um, animations. You would have to handle that through shaders. So that is your downside there, but that may not be required on everyone. So what I'm going to do here is just to show you another example here. We have six zeros. So using these sprites, we're going to try and spawn 1 million of these logs. All right. We'll go ahead and run this and see what happens. All right. It's going, it's spawning, or at least it's trying to. And you see it just crashed. So it's not even going to spawn that 1 million that we have up here. All right. So I'm going to turn that off. And if we go to our multi-mesh instance, go to our instance count. One, two, three, one, two, three. And we set that to 1 million. Enable that for our multi-mesh and give that a try. So when we we're just using sprites, it completely crashed. It's like, no, we're not even going to try to handle that many sprites. And if we go to our multi-mesh and give it a try, we did have a small delay there uh, as it's booting up. Now, this is uh, happening a little more with OBS running, so I'm assuming that had a small impact there, because you know CPUs and all that. Uh, but we're here; we're finally in the game, booting up. And as you see, we fully booted. We have a million objects here, a million of these logs. Uh, the editor is not liking this at all. Let me go to the debugger. And you see, even with this million, one million logs uh, in here on my screen, you can see we're still hovering around 60 FPS with one million of these things with the multi-mesh instance. Whereas with, if we were using sprites, not even gonna make an attempt. It's just gonna crash and just like, no, just no. <laughs> so you can see just how powerful this multi-mesh can be especially in terms of performance. So if you have something that's static, such as a lot of maybe trees that are sitting around. Um, again, another common use for this in uh, the 3D world is going to be things like grass. And a forest could be very useful with this. So you can, with this, you can, you can see um, just how much performance you can gain if you're willing to use a multi-mesh all right, hopefully that kind of explains a bit uh, what the multi-mesh is with it converging or compressing everything down to one draw call rather than splitting it up into a million or 97,000 different calls. Um, the amount of performance increase that we get can be completely massive when done at scale if you have a, a lot of objects like that. And... And it'll definitely keep down the number of nodes that we have in our scene tree, which will also take away some of that overhead performance. All right. So with that, take care. Have yourself a good one. And I'll see you guys in the next one.